Good morning. It's Sunday morning. We thank the Lord for blessing us to wake and see another day. We thank God for blessing all of you that tune in with us today. And we pray that the Lord will give us a, a word that will be a blessing to you and be a blessing to everyone that hear it. And that as we hear the word of the Lord, that we will also begin to really examine ourselves and put into practice the things that we learn. We don't want to be forgetful hearers, but we want to be doers of the word. And that's why I want to encourage everyone today to just take a few moments and just take a good look at yourself. And many times, so many uh, concerned about people judging them, but we have a responsibility to examine our own self. And after making a, 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 a thorough examination, then we have to do something about it. And that's why I want to encourage you today through the word of the Lord. But in but right now, we want to go before the spirit of the Lord in, in prayer. And asking the Lord as we open up our hearts and minds to him that we'll just be humble servants, humble children, obedient children to the Spirit of God. Amen. As we bow our heads and our hearts right now, we ask you, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you will look upon us this morning. Lord, we ask you, Father, that you will speak to our hearts, that you will call someone and all of us, Lord, to just examine ourselves again that we'll not be set up in self-righteousness and, Lord, self-exaltation, but, Lord, but in humility. Yet we will refer one another more than our own self. And, Father, we just ask you, Lord, your continued blessing. Lord, upon Oklahoma Northwest, bless our bishop. And, and Mother Broom, who, Lord, are, are going through their own tests and trials at this time, and bless all of the leaders here in the Oklahoma Northwest, first and second administrative assistants and wife, and Lord, and all the pastors, superintendents, Lord, and the missionaries, and district missionaries, all that have taken on the responsibility to try to help others, Lord, through this, troubling time that we live. We just ask you, Lord, you, these and all your blessings in Jesus Christ's name. Thank God. Amen. Amen. I want to say we thank the Lord for Mother Bourne's uh, being with us this morning again, and she's going to be reading from the Word of God. Amen. And uh, we're asking you to continue to pray for her, and we just we want to pray for the leaders of our country and that in the midst of all that we see going on, that we will will ask the Lord to give guidance for the heart of the king is still in the Lord's hand. And we need to pray for them as the word have told us to pray for all that are in authority. Lord, and we ask it. <clears throat> that you will continue to pray for us, that we will be found doing whatever the Lord instruct us to do, that we'll be willing and obedient servants of the Lord in these days that we live right now. And I'm going to ask Mother Borns that she will begin to read. But before I go there, I want to say we thank the Lord for all of the members of Greater Lance and that uh, that's helping and support us in this ministry. As we are uh, going through some things right now, but uh, we're looking forward to really getting back really active in the work of the Lord and to witness to men, women, girls, and boys as the Lord have commanded us, amen, to go into all the world and and preach this gospel, amen, to instruct people to know that God is real, amen. He's not a figment of our imagination, amen. Let them know the Lord will help you, and he will make a way for you, 
But at this time, I'm going to ask Mother Borns to read uh, Hebrews. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, verse 11. Amen. It's Hebrews 12 and 11. And I want you to, uh, we're going to put this together, and I want you to follow me closely to what I, the, I want to try to illustrate here from the Word of God. Amen. Is Mother, do you have that for me? Yes. Would you read that, please? Uh, Hebrews 12 and 11. Mm -hmm. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, mm -hmm. but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Amen. Even though the, the this particular scripture, amen, it was uh, talking about being corrected by the Lord. Uh, there's a, a word that come to me this morning while in prayer, and it uh, is, has to do with exercising. Now, I want to read this definition to you. It, it says exercise is uh, activity, requiring physical effort. It says act, activity regarding physical effort. It says uh, correct, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, carry it out to sustain or improve health and fitness. Exercise means to improve the heart and lung power. Amen. So we're talking about exercising, uh, and we're going to read different expressions that Apostle Paul made to Timothy concerning uh, the exercising of our spiritual uh, abilities and efforts to do what God has commanded us to do. So we're we're going to uh, uh, ask Mother to read also First uh, Timothy 4 and 8. Said, For bodily exercise profiteth little, mm -hmm. but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. See, he's talking about bodily exercise, probably little. When it comes to the, the spiritual walk with God, you can be in perfect physical condition, but spiritually could be in a depraved condition, uh, neglect, you know, uh, just from the very fact that it, when we, as we look through the word of the Lord here, we'll notice something that we can know a thing, but yet if we don't practice it, it will not get more effective in our life. So the Lord, he wants us to not only be, he don't want us to be forgetful hearers, but doers of the word of God. Many people quote scriptures, but I often wonder how many of them actually live what they quote. You know, so let, let's go on in uh, a little bit farther into the, the word of the Lord here. As, uh, mother's going to read from uh, St. Luke 18, 18 and, and 1. one. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Amen. And what I want to try to establish here is that we need to develop a, a, come a regular practice in these particular things that we're going to point out. If we are going to grow 
in the grace of God, there are some things we're going to have to do. We can't spend all of our day having fun and looking for some type of pleasure. Amen. But we're going to have to make the time to pray. Jesus said that men ought to always pray and do what? Not faint. Not to faint or don't give up, don't stop. Amen. No matter how active you, your lifestyle is, we ought to always take the time out to communicate with the Lord. And so we want to start, uh, I would appreciate it if you would just write it down. Remember this. Make a list. I want to pray each day. Amen. Men ought to always pray and not faint. Jesus encouraged this. This is not something that being born uh, 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 produced, but, the, but Jesus told his disciples this. And this is the same thing is in effect for us today. Amen. So we have to develop a prayer life or a plan to be in prayer. Because sometimes we go all day long and never even tell the Lord, thank you for waking me up this morning. Man. I mean, you can get started in the very beginning because you're in a rush and you got to fulfill what you, your desires for the day. But what about taking the time out to talk to the Lord, talk to the Creator? Amen. We need his help. You may make plans, but if the Lord doesn't bring it to pass, it will not happen. Amen. So then the next thing that we want to uh, consider here is that uh, is, is fasting. Yes. Remember, these are exercises. It, it takes an effort for us to put these things into practice. It's not going to just happen. Amen. It's always something going to come up that can divert you, but we have to make it a purpose. Just like getting up at six o'clock in the morning, getting ready to go to work, it's a practice. We do it. We make sure we 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 want to be on time. Well, we ought to develop a regular prayer time. Take time out to talk to the Lord. Amen. The Lord wants us to communicate with Him. He created us for that. So we want to encourage you to do this. All right. There's another uh, uh, object that we have here that we must do is in Matthew 6, 16 through 18. Moreover, when you fast, mm -hmm. be not as the hypocrites mm -hmm. of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Amen. So here we see Jesus did not discourage fasting, but he, he, he encouraged his disciples to fast. Fasting is another practice that we very seldom do. And that's uh, taking the time out to deny yourself. It, see, God, uh, if we... Uh, live all of our life to please us, uh, then I wonder, amen, how concerned are we about our eternal life? See, our existence uh, is not only just to, to be here on this earth, but after this life is, is, is finished, our spirit still lives. And we have to consider our spiritual condition. Yes. So we also have to put into practice fasting, self-denial. It doesn't mean you fast until you, you, you're about to die or something like that or, or fast yourself to death. I, I, when I, back in 
during the Vietnam era, we saw many of the Buddhist monks, they would sometimes set themselves on fire. Some, some would fast themselves to death. We're not talking about that. We're talking about making the time, making it a common practice to uh, deny yourself of all of this food that we eat. Today, when the Bible talked about men, uh, about drunkenness, we're not just only talking about alcoholic intake, we're also food. Amen. If you're not careful, food will become your God. As we see people now just eat, eat, eat so much. But see, but what we have to remember is we have to deny ourselves. We're not, amen, uh, we know our limits to how far we can go, put forth some effort. Start putting into practice these things. Don't forget to pray. Don't forget to fast. Amen. And whatever you do, study the word of God. Take the time out and read a scripture. It, it, it'll come to you. I don't have time. Yes, you do have time. You make time for everything you want to do in life. You make time. But when it comes to God, we don't have time. We have to make time for him too. So this is part of our development. It's also, uh, as I said, has to do with the fasting. Amen. And, then, and also I want to remind you also that when we fast, it's not a, Lord, I want a new car. Lord, I want more money. Lord, I want to be stronger than this one. I want to be healthy. I want to be, it's not all about selfish consideration, but it's about ourselves and our relationship with the Lord. And all of these things, what I'm mentioning today, will improve our uh, relationship with the Lord. And it will also improve our relationship with our fellow man. I guarantee you all of this hate being spread around is not because people are fasting and praying. Amen. That that not that the hatred and all of that and and malice and all of this bitter talking and all of those things. That's not coming from the Spirit of God. Amen. So we have to put some fasting upon situations. I'm going to ask Mother to read James 4, 1 through 3 for me. From whence come See? wars and fightings among you? Mm -hmm. Come they not hence, even of your lusts that war in your members? Mm -hmm. Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. See? Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. See, many people today, all their prayer is about what you can do for me what I can obtain, what I can gain, what I can gather. What, well, what about the spiritual condition? Do you pray about the anger management problem? Do you, do you pray about the selfish mindset? I'm thinking of no one but me and mine. You know, but see, but as James was indicating here, that people pray, but it's for selfish purposes. See, we want to obtain from the Lord so we can be a blessing to someone else. It, it's not just all about you. It's not all about me. I want what I want. I want this. I want that. I got to have this. Amen. Amen. And you'll go into a state of covetousness. Amen. That's always wanting something, wanting what other people have. Amen. It's nothing about 
It's nothing wrong with wanting to have a nice automobile or something. Amen. But when you start doing, I want that. Well, if they have it, it's not yours. Amen. We would have a lot less divorce if people could be satisfied. Yeah. Amen. So many people are dissatisfied because they will not exercise themselves of being satisfied. Amen. It's always about, I got to have more. I got to have more. People are trillionaires. And I got to have more money. You're never spending in your lifetime. So that's only that out of control desire. Amen. We have to help others. The Lord can bless you with much, but don't leave others out. You know, don't forget about reaching out to help someone else. To, to help feed someone else. Uh, Mother Borns and I and, and my children, they were right there with us. We've helped many people, brought them into our home, trying to help others to make it in this life. And the Lord have blessed us. We, I'm looking for some other blessings for us in our, as far as our uh, family living and, and things are concerned. But no matter what, the condition is, I, I, I learned some things from my mother. Mother, my mom and dad had uh, 15 living children, but there's one thing I noticed about my mother, she would still feed the neighborhood children. Of course, <laughs> of course, us children, when it became dinner time, we wanted our friends to go home. Because, you know, we had a selfish view and we wanted them to go home so we would have, make sure that we have more to eat. But my mother would always take the time out to help the neighborhood children. And so we, I learned from that, that the Lord does not want us to be selfish. Amen. Amen. So we have to practice not being selfish. But, uh, I, I do uh, thank the Lord for James. Amen. He said uh, that we should not have selfish desire that's only concerned about us, but be concerned about others. We shouldn't live so fearful. We're afraid of everything, everybody. Amen. We have to, Jesus wasn't afraid. He, he dealt with even those that hated him. Amen. So, I want to ask Mother to read from Isaiah 55 and 11. So shall my word be that goeth it's, forth out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. It shall not return unto me, boy, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. We're not talking about some man's promise. We're talking about the the, uh, the the Lord God Almighty that created the heaven and earth and all that is in them. And the, the Lord sent his word to perform what he wanted to do. Amen. So we're blessed. Amen. Amen. To be the children of God. And I believe we are. I believe when the Lord saved us, there is a change take place in our inward man. In our heart, in our mind, our desires change. Of course, in this natural body, in this fleshy body, there's still desires that come. But the Lord give us the authority over this body. Amen. And so we began to seek the Lord about us being obedient children. Amen. And one thing that really disturbs us is when you have a rebellious and stubborn and disobedient child. God doesn't want us to be the children of God and we're stubborn, disobedient, rebellious, hateful, mean. This, that is not the character of God. The Lord, God, the Bible said, God is love. Yes. Amen. The Lord loved his creation. He loved mankind. Amen. Amen. And we have to ask God to help us when we don't have the, the right frame of mind toward other people. 
We have to ask God to help us. The Lord is here to, to enable us to, the, to live the life that he requires of us. All of this goes to his glory. Amen. When you ask the Lord, reach up and ask the Lord to help you and the help come, guess who gets the glory out of it? He does. Amen. So we, we have to remember, we have another exercise to do, not only to just keep our physical man in good condition, but we, and, I, and I would not discourage the fact that we have to keep our mental man in condition. Amen. And, and uh, there was uh, some desires that I had early on, and I would find myself uh, looking back at those things. I desire, I, I want to help senior members to keep their minds active. Amen. And I, I was doing a little read up on that, if you don't mind me sharing that with you right quickly. Amen. It, it says that the human mind, even as you get older, you can keep the, a sound mind by keeping your mind active. It says good to even, uh, you know, do uh, crossword puzzles or put together those little picture puzzles, and, you know, and, and also uh, trying to increase your vocabulary, looking up words and Thing to keep your mind active because we can say like people speak things over you well I see a touch of Alzheimer's and all amen need to rebuke that <laughs> amen people speak all type of things over you but see but the thing is uh, we we want to keep our, our our minds active too and reading the word of God and studying the word of God is a way of keeping our minds active. When you read something you don't understand, ask the Lord to open it up to you. See? So in this, we're still uh, uh, exercising. So we don't want to leave our natural man out, but we definitely don't want to leave our spiritual man out of the equation this is more important than our natural man but we we've got to become more considerate of ourselves and what we are doing amen we can say well i know i need to fast well I, I know i need to pray but if you never do it it's still not being done amen i know someone can say amen with me is still not being done. So we don't want to, as I said, build up all of our physical condition and mental condition and leave our spiritual condition wanting and destitute and empty and sad and, you know, don't have any hope, no confidence in your prayer. You know, and that's not the condition the Lord wants us in, but he wants us to to look to him, trust him. And I want to, uh, would like for mother to read one more scripture here for me. Uh, and that's in 2 Timothy 2 and 15. And this is also another uh, part of our discipline is to do this. Would yes. you read that for me, mother? Study to show thyself approved unto God, mm -hmm. a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, Rightly dividing the word of truth. He told us to study to do what? See, he said to show thyself, to show thyself unto approved God. unto man. To God. Study. So here's another exercise. Study yes. to show thyself approved unto God. Uh huh. And what else? A workman that See? needeth not to be ashamed. Yes. Rightly dividing the word of truth. See, a workman, not not a lazy man, but he said a workman, a worker. See, it takes an effort to study. And you can convince yourself, 
well, I don't feel like it. I'm tired. I got to do this. But let something come up and all of a sudden you're not tired anymore. We have to realize we're in a conflict. There is an enemy that speak to us constantly, trying to discourage us from doing the thing that pleases God. See, he says, the study to show ourselves approved, huh? Unto who? God. God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. It's, it would be a very sad thing if you're going to go build a house and when you get there, you don't have any equipment. I think you would be ashamed. <laughs> Amen. He said a workman that needed not be ashamed. What? Well, Rightly dividing see? the word of truth. Amen. Just saying anything. Amen. Just whatever you want to say. Just right. put it in your own way. Mm. Express it your own way. Whatever you want to just say. But the Lord wants us to know what we are talking about. Yes. Amen. Amen. Come on now. I mean, he want us to know ourselves what we are talking about. It, it's nothing wrong with asking someone to help you to understand something, but you ask for an understanding so you will have that knowledge. Mm -hmm. And why obtain more knowledge and do nothing with it? See? So it, it, mm -hmm. it calls for us to discipline ourselves. And that's what the word of God is all about. It's about us walking by a discipline. Amen. I, I thank God that it, it, it's a blessing when the Lord has blessed your life. You're no more getting in trouble with the laws. You're no more breaking into homes and stealing from someone. And, amen. But when you give your life to the Lord, he make a change in you. There are so many dissatisfied people confessing Christ today because they're not exercising these spiritual obligations that we have. I mean, they live in still the same old way they always have. No change. No change anywhere. Still the same old bitter spirit. Same old anger management problem. Never overcoming anything. But I want to encourage you today. Don't make excuses for where you're wrong. Look to the Lord to help you. Amen. To gain this ground that we have allowed so long to just pass us by. We'll see our neighborhoods change. We'll see our church atmospheres change. It's a terrible thing when we 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 are in the house of God and there's so much animosity and bitterness and anger toward the other brothers and sisters in the church. And, and sometimes there's some people difficult to get along with, but you have to have the faith and look to the Lord to help you. We, we're not only in this thing for ourselves. We have to keep ourselves under control, I mean, under control, so we can help others to get out of trouble. Amen. Amen. There are some people that have a terrible attitude toward you. Keep yourself under control. But when you lose it, you both lost it. See, but sometimes people want you to get angry. Amen. I know I'm telling the truth now. There are some people want you upset. They want you to be bitter, but that's that spirit within them. You see, but the Lord wants us to conduct ourselves as the children of God that walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. If you pray, you fast, you study, you be loving, be kind, be temperate, be patient. Amen. These qualities come from the Lord. The Lord want us to be. He want us to be patient with one another. And sometimes uh, we have a uh, problem with certain other personalities, but we have to learn one thing, and it, it would really be a, 
a blessing to us to realize this. I, I don't care how right you feel. You are. It's a possibility you could still be wrong. Yeah. I don't care how confident you feel about yourself. Oh, I'm better than everybody. I'm the best cook there is. I guarantee you there's someone that's, that's better than you in this world. Amen. Uh, someone else has a better control over themselves than you do. So never get think so highly of yourself that you think you're better than others. Of course, the Lord put, can put you in a, a different elevation and have, you know, you have different qualities, but there are faults in you also. Everyone may not see it all the time, but you know yourself better than anyone else. Amen. And so we have to be honest with ourselves. We have to be and surely be honest with God. Do not lie to him. He knows exactly what's going on with us. I, I trust that something today will, will stir, amen, your pure minds and reactivate what used to operate. Amen. Because sometimes we just kind of start getting slack and, you know, sort of want to kind of blend in, fit in like everyone else. But the Lord is letting me know to declare this to the body of Christ that hear this. It's time to exercise ourselves in prayer, in fasting, in studying, amen, in just doing the word of God. Amen. We pray the Lord's blessing be upon you. And we never like to go off the air without offering a word of prayer for someone out there that may not know the Lord. Maybe something that they uh, was said that would cause you to realize there's more to life than just what you see. Amen. It's a blessing, amen, when you have peace on the inside. When others are all upset, you still have peace. Amen. It's, it's a, means so much to have the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. <coughs> it enables us to endure things and go through things when you still have an uplifted spirit, when things are really going wrong seemingly amen but you still have that inner joy on the inside it is not just happiness but amen the joy of the lord is greater than just being happy amen many people are happy with getting a new car but they don't have the joy of the lord something happened to their new car and they lose everything all the control they have see we can't get caught up in physical things, but we have to keep our minds stayed upon the Lord. And we're going to go before the Lord right now. Amen. As we pray for that, perhaps there's someone out there want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ into their heart. God sent his son and he gave to this earth that we would have a hope, that we will have the ability through him to overcome the world <clears throat> and all that the world have to offer us. Amen. And there are many tempting things out there, but God want us, amen, to offer him to the world and let the world know there is a better way in Christ Jesus. As we bow our heads and our heart before the spirit of God, Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, today for allowing us this opportunity, Lord, to, to speak your word. But we thank you, Lord, for stirring us up, Lord, today, to, Lord, to, to pray, to call on you, to call on your great name, Lord, the never failing God, the creator of heaven and earth and all that is in them. And Lord, we ask you, Father, that you will Touch their heart and give someone to realize there is something better than what they see. And that's the peace of God in their heart. We ask you, Lord, to give them the 
Lord, to just surrender their heart to you and ask you to come into their life, Lord, and that you will take up, Lord, that all of that that's missing on the inside, that you will bring your joy and your peace and your love and your patience and kindness, Lord, into their inner man. Lord, that there'll be a great change in them. Lord, we ask your blessing today. We pray for the sick. We pray for the shut in. We pray for those that are afflicted. We pray for those that have lost hope. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Lord, those that don't see a way out. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray that you will move in their life and give them to know, Lord, there is hope. There is a greater and a higher walk in you. Lord, we pray, oh God, that you will bless everyone that hear this word today and hereafter, Lord God, that give us to know that we must exercise, Lord, also our spiritual characteristics in you. Oh God, that we might grow in your grace, in knowledge and in understanding. Father, we ask your blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Thank you. Thank God. Amen. 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 We love the Lord. We appreciate all that he has done for us. We want to encourage you. We want, we want to encourage you, amen, to, uh, that our church is, is available. We're going to uh, begin to become more active in the church. I've been trying to watch uh the virus and how it's working and everything, but I, we're beginning to feel stronger the urge to come back together and I will be notifying the saints of what I feel led of the Lord to do, amen, because we don't want to leave the Lord out and no matter what happens, we want to always make him first and we're asking you that, that uh, to realize that our churches, uh, Greater Lansing and Church of God in Christ here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Amen. 4909 North Martin Luther King. And we're asking you to uh, feel free, amen, to come at any time. Amen. Or call or get in touch with someone and we can uh, direct you in what we're going to be doing. Amen. So we thank God for you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.